Our next speaker is code 1029, performing Forever Changed. Oh, now you have never seen a baby so <laughs> chubby. <laughs> oh, he had this, this little bit of peach colored fuzz for hair. I mean, I knew he was special from the first day he was born. And I know people think I just say that, but I mean, Blake was just one of those kids who was never any trouble. I mean, only one month old, he started sleeping through the night and he weaned himself off the bottle. <laughs> Blake just knew when it was time to go on to the next phase. <laughs> you hear someone say, life is short, but now when I hear it, I hear it differently. The response to the Oklahoma City bombing on April 19, 1995, was memorialized with the symbol of time. The structure includes three gates, displaying the minutes frozen in the minds of those who survived. 901, representing the innocence before the attack. 902, symbolizing the devastation. And 903, the moment healing had to begin. This attack on my home state informed our country's response to future national tragedies. However, Laura Kennedy continues to live with a lesson that too many parents are having to learn. Sometimes you just have to try to be okay. And as the memorial so eloquently recalls, we come together to remember those who were killed, those who survived, and those who were forever changed by Marcia Knight. Because thoughts and prayers aren't enough. Well, uh, I put Blake in that daycare center because it was a two hour drive to and from work each day. <laughs> and it allowed me to spend time with him. I worked at the Murrah building. We ate lunch together every day and Blake just loved daycare. And yeah, people used to always needle us about being together, but I mean, we were ecstatic. Uh, Well, the, um, the Friday before the bombing, I got to watch Blake go down the slide for the first time. <sighs> it's hard. And sometimes I think I shouldn't have had him there. But... Then I remember everything. 
including April 19th, 1995. It uh, started just like every other day. Blake's room, it's, it's just across the hall, and I'm lying in bed listening for him, but very rarely does he cry. Instead, I just, I hear him singing. And so I go in there, and he's just dancing to this rocket with Barney tape. And I sang that Barney song. That morning, everything was making me late. It was as if God was telling me not to go in there, but I did. And so did Blake. I signed him in. Blake looked up at me and he said, I love you, Mommy. It was 9 a.m. Nine oh two. Blake, <coughs> baby, Blake. Workers were dragging out children. <coughs> My son, he's wearing jeans and a pullover. No, don't touch me, Blake! And I just kept screaming, Blake! 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 Come on, come on, come on, wake up. He, he needs to go to a hospital. He's not responding. Come on, God. You can't take him from me with me here. You can't take him from me with me here. Come on, wake up. Come on, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You can't take him from me. <laughs> Every time I close my eyes, I see my little boy. <laughs> trying desperately to breathe. No, um, that was me willing you to breathe. And I, I touched you. And I said, it's okay. It's okay! Now, where were you? Why am I still here? And people see these, these survivors doing things and they think that they're so strong, but we're not strong. We're just stuck here, living on repeat. And it, <clears throat>
Yeah. <laughs> it's painful. I'm forever changed. 